I'm going to show you how to take such a boring photo and turn it into this using Photoshop. Hey, what's going on YouTube? My name is Mo and I'm a car photographer from Bahrain. If it's your first time around my channel and you'd like to learn all about car photography, then go ahead and subscribe now so you don't miss out on all the cool stuff that I create every week. Now, before I start, I'd like to start with you. What kind of tools do you use to edit your photos? Please leave me a comment in the comment section below. All right, so before moving into this tutorial, I'm going to make this file or the raw file available for you to download and practice as you watch this tutorial. All right, so let me show you my thought process when I get into Photoshop. And the first thing I do is plan things out. So I would create a guide layer in which I put my thoughts on just to make sure I achieve what I had in mind. And sometimes, you know, you tend to forget what you're going to do throughout the process. So take five minutes, 10 minutes, plan your shootout. And as you can see here, I added a bit of guides like, yay, I'm going to, you know, emphasize the light here. I'm going to darken the areas around here. I'm going to darken the car. And I actually forgot to point out what I'm going to remove within the photo, but I did remove it eventually. All right, enough of this, let's jump right in. So the first thing I did, I just created an empty layer and I used the clone stamp tool to remove, you know, this kind of distraction over here. Now, if you're not familiar with how to remove objects within Photoshop, I'll leave a link to one of my videos in the description below. Now, before carrying on, it's worth mentioning that I have actually used the pen tool and traced around the car and I did cut the car out. And uh, as you can see here, I have a cutout of the car. And the reason why I did this is that gives you flexibility in terms of what you want to do with the backdrop or the background versus what kind of edits you're going to do on the car itself. All right, let me enable this again. All right, so now that I have the car in a separate layer, kind of cut out of the car, I added a curves adjustment layer in which I've darkened the background to my liking. I then desaturated the entire area just slightly, not too much, by adding a channel mixer. And the way it works, I'd select one of the filters and mainly I use the blue and I've dropped down the opacity to 43%. All right, so moving onwards, I created a stamp visible layer in which I've merged all the layers below it into one layer and I created a smart object. Now a smart object will allow you to apply certain filters from this gallery and then you can go back to the settings and change it so you don't lose such settings. I basically created that layer and then I took it to camera raw filter and I mainly did two things. One is I added a bit of clarity and a bit of vibrance. I see that I've adjusted a bit of the tone, and the temperature, made it a bit warmer. And I also added a graduated filter to darken the ground. Simple. All right, so the next thing I did with the curves is I actually emphasized the lights over here. And uh, if I enable these, you'd see what I mean. So how did I achieve this? Let me just show you quickly how can this be done. So um, before actually adding a layer or adjustment layer, I'll do a rough selection. And um, it's like so, you can do it with a pen tool, you can do it with any kind of selection tool that you prefer. And then I added a curves adjustment layer. Now, it created a mask based on our selection. And if I drag that up, Ooh, you got lights. But there is a problem with this light and that it's too rough. So let's fix that. The way to do that is actually blurring the mask itself. So I'll go to blur, Gaussian blur, and then select, you know, a radius that would fit the photo. And just for the quick demonstration, I'll do that. Now you notice that it's kind of weird the way it looks and it's kind of cut out right here and it's affecting the car. So what you can do is just select a brush, 
drop the flow down to say about 10%. Make sure it's a black brush and then brush it away just a bit at the bottom. Make sure it's a very soft brush. Let's make it big and just brush it away. Kind of soften it. Now you can also control the intensity of, of that effect by just lowering the opacity down. It's pretty easy and straightforward. So I did one area and then I copied it and did the other side. And then on top of it, I created another layer in which I've brushed with a white brush and changed the blending mode to soft light just to add that bit of an effect. Just to emphasize the top portion of the area that there is actually a light. All right, then I added a contrast layer using curves. It's very simple. It's an S kind of curve that just added a, a contrast across the entire image. And then I added another curve to darken the right side of the car because it just didn't fit. So I had to darken that area by using the curves. I crushed the midtones bit down and uh, painted that with a white brush. Then I added another curves adjustment to darken the car just slightly to make it fit the scene. And then I added a selective color adjustment just to um, adjust the reds just slightly to adjust the reds within the image. And then I added a color lookup adjustment which is basically loading a lot that will transform the image. Now if you're not familiar with LUTs, I've made an entire video about how to color grade using LUTs in Photoshop. I'll leave a link to it in the description below. All right, I then added a color balance adjustment layer. And the reason why I did that, there was this green tint within the picture that I did not like. I'm not sure if you can see it, but see, this is the before, this is the after. And I got rid of it using um, the color balance adjustment. All right, to wrap it up, I just added a dodge and burn layer and I just dodged and burned around the car just to give that extra details to the to the car, you know, the highlights and the shadows. Now, if you're not familiar with dodging and burning, I have a video on how to do so and I'll leave it in the description below. All right, YouTube, that was pretty much it. Straight and forward, always plan your edits. It's not really necessary to stick with your guide but or with your plan but you know it gives you some guidance on what to do and I spend five ten minutes before editing and then go ahead and do the edits all right don't forget to subscribe leave me a comment and follow me on Instagram and until then I'll see you at the next video